modo. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Joe, you remember the you, you remember the that game on the phone where you could you, they shoot the fruit, fruit ninja? <laughs> oh hell yeah! I still play it to this day on my son tablet or my daughter's. That's, one of them. that's why I just did that. That's why I just did that because I was thinking like the fruit ninja. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta get combos and shit. <laughs> yeah, that's tough. Yo, what's what's, what's going on, y'all? Man, we uh. We appreciate y'all tuning in. It's Wednesday, so you know what time it is. It's the Devo and Chris Joe show, 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. Before we get going, uh, I want to shout out our sponsor, Flintstone Cannabis Company. You already know they've been holding us down for however long we've been doing it, the whole season. So uh, we appreciate y'all. And if yes, you're sir. in the Keith area, if you're downtown, if you're by Walton Street, all you got to do is take a walk down that street and they got the big ass doors that got the marijuana leaves on the door. So you're you going to know where you're at, but we, uh, <laughs> we appreciate y'all, man. We appreciate Flintstone. We appreciate you, Mike, for, for holding us down and, and, and supporting the show. Uh, Joe, before we start talking about the games, cause I want to talk about Clemson and obviously last <laughs> night, a huge win, the biggest win of the season, uh, red yeah. first, uh, win against a, a top 10 ranked opponent and the first win against the top ranked opponent in or a top 10 ranked opponent since 2018, I believe. But before that, just, you know, update me on your week, man. What, what's been going on since, since last Wednesday, you know, you, you be in the office, you got yeah. baby girl. So you, uh, oh, yeah. super oh, busy, yeah. man. You super, and if anyone doesn't know my, my guy, Joe, he, 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 I know you hear baby girl in the background. He busy, man. He, he got a lot of shit going on. So taking care of his business so what's what's the week been like for you bro grinding we're, we're our season is coming to an end uh we actually had a, a game uh last thursday that we ended up winning against one of the top teams in the in the conference or in the league um granted there's only five teams in our league right now which makes it you know very tough because you end up playing the same team four times probably maybe even a little bit more dependent uh, but we had a good win on Thursday. That felt good. You know, we turned around on Saturday and lost one at their – so we do kind of like home and away. We beat them at home on Thursday, lost at their spot in Quebec City, which is about two hours away from Montreal. Um, and we, we were close the whole game, and in the fourth quarter, we kind of just crumbled. You know what I'm saying? Just stopped playing within the team uh, construct. And, and, you know, guys kind of veered away from the scout and little mishaps like that. But – I've uh, just been grinding, bro. I've been in the lab with guys daily. Um, I got a message from one of our players today, you know, just thanking me for the work that we've been putting in. Uh, he says he, he feels the improvements. He, he feels more confident out there on the court. And I said, that's why I'm here, baby. You know what I'm saying? This is this is why I'm here, to help you uh, get to that point where you feel confident, where you can do these things that we're working on in games. And, you know, so that right there was gratifying just to know that my work is, you know, being appreciated and, you know, cause I'm putting in the hours, you know what I mean? And these, like I, I told the guys, I said, I'm only going to work with who wants to work. I'm never going to pull you and say, come get a workout in. Cause you know, I'm here every day at said time to said time. If you want to work, I'm here. You know what I'm saying? So the ones who do come out and, and show me that they do want to get better and they, have a passion. That's for me, you wanting to get better is, is a passion for the game. You're not just letting yourself peak at where you at right now. You want to get further ahead than the competition, than your teammates. And, uh, you know, so I, I'm, I've been in the lab to say, to say the least for lack of better words, I've been in the lab getting it in. Um, you know, obviously baby girl is growing five months in a couple of weeks and two weeks should be five months. So now she's to the point where she's rolling over, but her arm is getting stuck. You know what I'm saying? She's trying to figure out how to get it. She's trying to figure out how to get that joint out from under her right now. Um, but it's been, it's been great. Honestly, bro, it's been great. You know, I have no complaints at this point. Yo, how, What's been how going old, on on your end? How old? Uh, oh, go ahead. No, you good. Yeah. How old is a uh, baby girl? Cause Mook, Mook's baby is, I want to say four months. See, but you're, you're yeah, so older than that. Four and a half. Oh, so right, really, so right around time. the same. Yep, 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 right around. I'm like, when I had my daughter, it was like two hours, maybe a week later or something. I see Mook post uh, his daughter. I'm like, oh, shit, congrats, <laughs> bro. I didn't even know. So then we had a little moment. You know what I mean? So that, I, I, shout out to Mook, by the way. You know what I'm saying? I love to see his growth and his maturity and how he's the man that he's become. 
Um, so, the, you know, to see him as a father and, and full time, you know, full time father, full time at work, helping the kids in the community, helping the kids at the school. He has a great uh, he's doing great things in the community as well. You know, it doesn't go unseen. And I always make sure I tell him, bro, keep doing it. You changing lives. So shout out to my man. Moo. And, and you know what? I think that's big. Like what you just said, like just giving people their their recognition, not saying you got to go <laughs> tell them all the time. But like, I, I think. You know, some people, they try to do so much. And then, it, you know, when you hear somebody be like, man, I see you. You know what I mean? You, you're doing a great job. Yeah. You motivate and inspire kids. That helps people, man. That helps people. You, you talking about working out the kids. And, and again, we're not chasing the kids. If you want to get better, that's up to you. It's not, I'm not about to be Gosh. calling your phone. Because at this at this point, when you're in college, it's up to you, man. Like, like you got to yeah. figure out, we, we can put the little seed in the back of your mind. But, you know, you, you got to be the one to really you know, go out there and put the work in and reach out and do that. So, uh, yeah, man, that's, that's what it's about, man. You know, inspire and motivate and, 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 uh, you know, shout out to you and, and, and Mook's one of the best. And I'll tell you what, you, you guys have impeccable timing. <laughs> impeccable. Timing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Y'all was, y'all, 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 y'all was like-minded in that. You know what I mean? When it came, you know what I mean? Yeah. We yeah, connected. <laughs> <laughs> what I mean, connect, something when you connect from a, from a distance, man, for sure. And another milestone that I want to shout out, you know, my my daughter Paris, um, beautiful baby girl. She, she was sleeping in the bed at some point, right? And um, she is now sleep training. She's in her crib now, and she's been doing extremely well. First couple of nights was a little rough because she's not used to so she crying and there's different methods that you can use um but she's been doing great bro now she's sleeping soundly through the night probably wakes up a couple times but all you got to do is go ahead and rub her back a little bit she go right back to sleep she just needs a little comfort and now that with that happening your boy joe is back in the bed because you know i got relegated to the couch <laughs> you feel <Yeah>. me <laughs> when that was going on and so now I'm back in the bed. I'm sleeping great. You know what I mean? So I'm feeling fantastic, man. Come on, man. Let my guy, let my guy back in the bed. Man. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what's up, man. Yeah. So bro, for me, just same thing, man. Grinding, um, you know, trying to put stuff together for the ED23 Foundation. Uh, this past, you know, probably the beginning of February is, is really when it started, uh, you know, heating up for the hoop side, the ED23 hoop side. Yep. We, we, we've had our tryouts in our, for our teams. Uh, we got about look it, man. <laughs> It'll be all right. Look, now, now, what I want to create is, you know, something where we could build on with the kids, right? It, it's not mm-hmm. like we're going to have Division One talent right there. You know what I'm saying? You, you're not going to have that when you're when you're starting out. But you, you want to yep. be able to provide these kids with the opportunity and the resources to be able to get better, right? And then 100%. put coaches around them, you know, myself and, and my and my coaches to be able to, you know, put the right knowledge into their head and, and give them the right inspiration inspiration and, and, and motivation to be able to do better. And, and let's be real, like probably none of these kids or, or most of them aren't going to go play college basketball. But the, the whole thing is to be able to, give you an opportunity to learn, like develop your social <laughs> skills, develop, you know, how you work through adversity, how, how you communicate yeah. with others, how you, you work together with others. You know what I mean? And in, in, in a environment that maybe a lot of these kids have never been in, you know exactly. what I'm saying? And, and that's real, that's real life, Joe. Like you go out outside when you get outside of the nest talking about your parents' house, mm-hmm. You're gonna have to deal with shit that that makes you uncomfortable. So we want to be able to throw you in that fire and 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 prepare you for some real life shit. And you know that's what we're trying to do at ED Two Three Hoops. We uh, we got eight teams, four boys, four girls. Um, so they're just getting the practices together. Shout out to my uh, director X. He's uh, Xavier. He's he's done an awesome job and uh, you know putting that together. And, and and all the coaches have as well. So I know they sacrifice their time and. Um, yeah. you know, to be able to help out and, and, uh, and that's the thing, bro, when you're, when you're really growing something, you know, you, you got to recognize, just like we were saying, you recognize the people who really help build it. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of these people, you know, are, are taking the time out of their day and their schedules to be able to, to do that. So, um, you know, I always keep that in the back of my mind, man, that, you know, you, you got a lot of people that are, that are willing to help and, and willing to support and, uh, you know, that means a lot and, and, and it goes a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I got a question for you. Yeah. So in the process of now, and now granted, this is grassroots sports. 
So the coaches don't have to be, you know, 10 years experience, et cetera, et cetera. But what do you require your coaches to have as, you know, as far as basketball knowledge or whatever the case may be? Like, what's the requirement for your coaches, um, you know, to be able to coach your program? Because you, you obviously want to put coaches in place that one, care about kids, two, you could trust but three, that know the game at some capacity that could really shear on and help these kids grow from when they go to uh, playing uh, 10 and under then going to 11 or 12 and things of that nature. So how's it? How's that process? Yeah, I mean, I obviously want them to have basketball experience, whether it's playing or coaching, you know, and then I think a big thing is you want to have people who know how to deal with kids and know how to deal with people in general, like just know how to communicate, yep. know how to motivate, bring energy. Because, you know, at, at a young age, you know, we got two 10 and under teams. You know, so some of those kids, they don't know how to motivate themselves. You know what I mean? So you got to oh, be yeah. able to have, have coaches who know how to engage them, know how to get them going. Well, and attention span. That day looking over here. Oh, shit. No doubt. And, and you, and you got to have you got to have patience, Joe. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I think working with kids, the number one thing is to have patience because, you know, they're going to be doing all this shit when you're talking, you know what yeah. I mean? And, and, and your, your first reaction in, in the back of your mind is like, motherfucker, hold on, man. You, 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 I, 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 this is some, some real shit I'm giving you now. If you don't turn your motherfucking head. But, but it, it's just, it's just, you know, having the patience with these kids. Um, and then, you know, I, I want those type of people around who, who can handle that. And uh, I, I think yeah. we've, we've done a good, good job, but I mean, all the, the coaches have either playing experience or coaching experience at least yeah, at the high great. school level. Uh, we have yeah. a few that, that play college and, uh, um, you know, have, have, have done beyond that. So, um, yeah, man, we, we building something good, but, and, and I'm really excited about the foundation side of things. We, we, we got some stuff going on with, uh, make a wish central New York. Um, Ooh, that's we'll, fucking beautiful. Yep. So we're, we're doing, uh, we're getting some stuff together for, for a kid from, uh, out, out outside, uh, Watertown, I believe. Uh, we're trying to make something special happen for him. Uh, we are making something special happen for him. And then, uh, besides that, you know, just putting together some, uh, some bar, celebrity bar events to help, you know, fundraise for the foundation so we could, uh, do more for the events. And, and also, uh, you know, I, I got another call from ESPN, so I'm doing another game, um, so I'm doing the Tulsa Charlotte game, February 24th, and then I'll fly back home and then fly out to Chicago to do, uh, Wake Forest at Notre Dame. Uh, um, and, Ooh, hey, that yeah, boy yeah. going big time, dog. Boy, that boy I'm doing, trying. hey, come on, I'm dog. trying. I'm excited about it, bro. It's, it's just, you know how, I, and, and for me, I was kind of like going through like a little, funk i guess you know what i mean so like when you you have these things come up it, it, it brings you back to life almost you, you know what i'm saying so it's it was uh no, it was sure last night to look forward to and shit oh yeah they called yeah. you last night they called me last night man so it was uh man. i was happy about that from, you know what i mean bristol? what's the number is it a, is it from, from <laughs> bristol it's the 860 baby you know it's connecticut yeah for sure <laughs> yeah it's, it's, yeah, yeah. That's so, what's up. Uh, that's what's up. Yeah, so that's that's uh that's what's going on with me, Joe. Kind of a lot, just trying to stay busy, trying to stay uh engaged in the community, man, for sure. Um but let's uh hey, man, the community you're doing a great job, bro. I know I told you and I know I and I know I've said this last season, but there needs to be some type of and I don't know how I'm gonna get it done or how we can get it done if we the the people in here watching if we could rally together and get this man E D uh some type of, you know, uh fucking plaque of some sort. Somebody gotta acknowledge <laughs> you know and I, and I know that you and I know you E and I know you don't do it for none of the recognition, but like you mentioned, bro, it's good to because you do things from right here. You know what I'm saying? And I know that. But what you've been doing, you've been doing this. Let's just go back to to even just COVID, what you did for these small businesses that might have been down and out had it not been for your, you know, thought process and getting them some funding and, you, you know, helping them out. There's no way that there shouldn't be something done at some point. And I believe it's going to happen. It's just a matter of when. It's not a matter of if it is, because it is. It's more so a matter of when. Hey, we got to go ahead. We got to have a fucking go to City Hall. Something. We got to go somewhere. He got to be presented with something. Uh, um, um, not, I was going to say sportsmanship. What's that? What, the award that you get? Community Cares. One of them type. <laughs> stuff, bro. One of them type of choice, bro. You got to get that, though, for real. You do too much back to school, Thanksgiving, 
yo, dog, too much, too much, bro. And, and, and the people will be with you because they know if anybody knows, they know what you've done for them, bro. But like I always tell you, I'm proud of you and it's motivating because I'm thinking about how could I do that shit in Montreal? You know what I'm saying? Like, and I, I might have to start back where I grew up. You know what I'm saying? So I might have to go six, back there. Six, what a six, right? What you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I might have to go back there. Maybe a back to school, maybe like a little back to school drive. You know, no, you can't do that, bro. Supplies. You know what I mean? I just need to find the right people that that uh, help, be willing to help. Because obviously, you know, sponsors, who's going to help do what? I'm going to get that shit done, bro. I got to give back to my community in more ways than just, you know, basketball and being that motivator. I got to go see them. I got to be on the ground with them and be like, look, listen, you're fucking up right now, bro. You got a good life ahead of you. Stop doing what you're doing because there's some wild shit going on right now over in that area. You know what I mean? So I just want to help them and give them something to look forward to. But enough about that. Let's get to it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We And look, you know, we're going to talk about the game, Joe, but I, I think this shit that that we trying to tell y'all is super important because <clears throat> basketball was our platform that allowed us to kind of bring the attention to, to all these things that we're trying to do. Exactly. It, it started back with me. I, I no bullshit, Joe. I was just, I don't know why, but I, one day I just was like, man, fuck it. Let me get some coats and shit together or something and some pants and shit and just hand them out. You know what I mean? And then I, I remember put it on Twitter. I motherfucker had about 20 bags full. You know what I'm saying? Sitting in the, mm -hmm. in the, in the Q's locker room. So from that day, it was just like, <laughs> damn, like we could really do this to, 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 you know, help people out. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, and you, one of the best people that I know, like, as far as like a genuine soul, like a, a person who is a good person, like you, you, <laughs> you are very, yo. like you, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not a lot of people who are genuinely like that man one of my favorite people in the world bro and i don't i don't like people like that you know what i'm saying so. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? but but bro at the end of the day dog like the vehicle for us was who was basketball that that was our vehicle to be able to allow us to do all the other shit that we're doing right now you know what i'm saying as far as uh you know, the giveaways, the, you know, to be on this show right here and just talk real shit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We, 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 we like to fuck around and play around and have a good time, but we want to kick some real shit to you. Cause hopefully somebody in the chat going, it's going to stick in their head and they're going to go do it. And, and I'm going to tell you one yeah, thing that they might have kids and they might have kids. They might have nieces, nephews, whoever it could be, you know what I'm saying? For sure. And, and I know it, it works, bro. For a fact, when we talk about it on here, because I've seen people, in the chat, go ahead and do it by ourselves. And I'm going to say Matt Govendo, you know, Matt's always in the chat, but you know, I, I remember Matt just c collecting like baseball bats and gloves and cleats for uh, kids in the inner city. And he did that by himself. Mm -hmm. and, and I think, and, and I don't want to obviously take credit for what he did, but I, I think from him just being a part of what we were doing, cause he's a part of, of all the stuff that we do for the foundation. He always comes and helps. Hell yeah. yeah. No, he's locked in. And now he took it upon himself to be like, yo, I'm gonna do it by myself and do it and, and fucking made it happen. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like like you just said in the chat, two hundred plus kids got got new gear from that. That's a fucking that's a lot of kids, Bro, yo. That's a lot. Change that's a lot. change change lives. Now you get somebody who get those new gloves, new cleats. Bro, they, they feel like me. motherfucking Sammy Sosa out there. Come on, dog. Come on, dog. Like, sure. You change you changed my man life. Because he got a new glove. Now he now, now every day that motherfucker waking up with that new glove, it, it, breaking it in, throwing the ball, hitting the dog. You might have just created a, a a major league baseball player just off of that. Yo. Exactly, like, just off of that, bro. Like, That's crazy. Man, just off that, you, people don't think like that, bro. I, I'm telling you, like the no, camp set no. that we do, like when we doing them at the wire, or something, a little a little uh, inspiration or a couple of words change a motherfucker whole mindset. It could. You know what I mean? Yep. Mom, guess what I heard today from Chris Joe or, or from, from Coach E. Like, that's what I want to do. I want to help I want to help people out, Ma. Like, I want to be good at basketball, but I want to help people out. I want to coach. And that's kind of like on the on the ED23 hoop side, that's what it's about. Like, we want to give these coaches yep. opportunities. Because, Joe, a lot of the coaches, it's their first time. They really like coaching and, like, figuring it out. So, like, this is a stepping stone not only for the kids, but but for the coaches. You know what I'm saying? And then eventually you get experience, yo. When they get comfortable, Joe, go ahead and start your own shit. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like that's that's kind of like the beginning of of maybe something that you want to do or, or or take it 
uh, you know, it's definitely you want to make a platform career. that catapults them to the next, you know what I'm saying? To the next thing that they do, you know, that's, that's, a, that's a, a springboard. I, I take, I take, bro, that's a big responsibility. And I take, I don't take it lightly. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I think yeah. it's something that everybody goes through their shit, but when you know, you got that responsibility, like it's, you have to be able to go forward with that. So no, it's, it's, it's uh, it's love, man. But yeah, all right. We 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 chopped it up for a minute about some real <laughs> shit. So let's uh let's start with Clemson though, bro. I, I mean, we'll get to North Carolina because I know uh everybody wants to talk about that. But I, I want to talk about Clemson because obviously the return of Joe Girard, our guy Joe and Joe and yeah. Joe came in. And he played his ass off. He I think he was super efficient. He was led the game in scoring. I mean, how how good is, how good does that feel? to be able to come in to where you play for four years. Cause, cause for real, it, it, he's a Syracuse dude. Like he was there for four he, years. Like oh, you, no. you, you, no, you went to Clemson did, for a season. Time. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, but so for you to come in and have that type of game, <laughs> I know in the back of his head, he's like, yeah, motherfucker. And get the win. Yeah, no question. And get no the win. Doubt, and, doubt, and, doubt. and lead and be the leading scorer of the game. You know what I mean? All that matters. All that, all that. And I know, for a fact that when he left, because I remember being on Twitter when the news came out and it was like, oh, well, good riddance. We didn't need you anyway. And this, that. Well, let me tell you something. We fucking could have used the Joe Girard. You know what I'm saying? We definitely could have used him on, the team, him like, you know, on this team. You see what I'm saying? But that being said, I know that he's seen it because I know these kids are on Twitter a lot. Not just kids, adults as well, but I know he was seeing the the hate, but I'm sure he's seen the love because there was some love sprinkled in there. Um, but at the end of the day, <clears throat> when you're looking for something to fuel you, you're not thinking about all the fans that loved you at Syracuse. You're thinking about the ones that might have written uh, some bullshit about you on Twitter. <laughs> so for him to come in, that's what's going to fuel you. <laughs> you know what I mean? So he he came in. They, 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 they uh, you know doing the starting five announcements. There was some booze, which I wasn't too pleased about personally, just because like you said, he's a Syracuse guy. He did four years. You know what I'm saying? Like, what more do you want for? Like, he did his maybe, thing, bro. maybe he, he did, did his thing. thing. Come on, dog. He's he going, did, and, and, and he scored know, 2,000 points we that game cool. in the dome. Yep, he did. That's crazy. Great, you couldn't have written that any better. I know that we were kind of critical of him at some points just because of the role that he was in and the inconsistencies and things of that nature. But when you look at the numbers, bro, for four years, he's top at a lot. He's he's in there at the top of a lot of those, you know what I'm saying, those lists or those categories. So for him to come in and, and play well, we spoke a little bit before. I said, yo, he was running off of those single doubles like J.J. Reddick, like it, 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 at Duke. You know what I'm saying? He was coming off, going one way slow, turning back the other way fast. Judah get caught in the screen. Ah, tray ball. You know what I'm Bang. saying? Pass, pass, pass. He know how to attack the zone. Fake one way, get the ball back. Hand in his face, don't matter. You know what I'm saying? So he played He played well, and I know that shit felt good. Like you said, he scored 2,000 in the dome. Um, led, the, led the game in scoring. I know for a fact that he went back on that bus, headed back to, to campus. Like, I'm the fucking man. <laughs> I'm the man. Like I left, I left. To, I'm still the man in, in Cuse. Like that's the type of feeling he was having for right. sure. You know what I mean, man, that, that, I was, that's I'm a sure that's how I would, that's how I would approach it too. You know what I'm saying? If I left Hell and came yeah. back, yeah, they booing me. They saying this. Ah, oh, fuck you, Chris Joe. Oh, all right. <laughs> all and, that. And you think, bro? It's so easy. And then I was just reading the chat like last <laughs> night. They were booing Justin Taylor, who obviously hasn't been playing good at all. But you don't fucking boo your your home yeah, team, fuck you, the yeah, New York Knicks. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, New York a little bit different. Right? You, and, and two, let's, 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 they getting paid millions and millions of dollars. So if a motherfucker ain't yeah. playing good in the pros, he might deserve a fucking boo. You know what I'm saying? But but <laughs> I, you know what I'm saying? I think for college, bro, especially the students. If you're a student booing, man, yeah, I, I get it. I get it. You had a couple beers, whatever. You know what I'm saying? But you got to shut up, man, mm -hmm. for real, because yeah. Like, and they they not taking time to really think about the sacrifices that these kids make playing ball because they don't no, go home at any holidays during the season. They're not going home for Christmas. They're not going home for, for Thanksgiving. We 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 did it. We we know what it's Spring like. We know break, they, nothing. They, they, yeah, so like it, it's times like when you buy yourself a lot. You know what I'm saying? So like when you going through it, like Justin Taylor going through it, and then you gotta hear that bullshit from your home crowd, like 
Come on, dude. Like, it, it, it's tough. And those you students. You think he no- want to stay here, bro? He's not going to want to stay in a place that they booing nah, him. Like they supposed to be supporting him and covering him and, 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 and yeah. uplifting him, dog? I think he Come out. Come on, bro. I, I mean, I, I think he like, out, bro. I, mean, I'm I'm not I don't think he's a he's a bad player. I just think he's he's in a funk to where every time he get on the court, he 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 hesitant. Like, he's not confident in himself. You could tell how he out there, bro. You could tell how he playing. Mm-hmm. And you, you know what his body language was like? And he's not as talented as, as JJ, but... That's what his body language. What JJ had the same type of body language at the beginning of the season, as far as like the yeah, little bit he's questioning his shit. The question is shit. One thing I can't do is I'm not gonna question my shit. Motherfucker played ball too much. You know what I'm saying? If I if I miss a, you know what I mean? I work too hard. If I miss a shot, fuck it. I'm going back and I'm I'm gonna miss another motherfucker. If I if I, you know what I mean? If, but like to see to see and and kind of going to JJ for a second to see how he's playing now, bro, because he was he's he's been the best player on Syracuse probably since the beginning of January. Like just just how he's playing. But attack, like like going talking about yesterday's game from the tip. And this is what Syracuse yeah. needs to do going forward. From the tip, these motherfuckers was aggressive, set the tone against a, a yeah. bigger, more physical team. These motherfuckers was bang right at your head. JJ Judah. Yeah. Like going yeah. down here. Yeah. In the basket, no, you know, no hesitation, nothing like that. Like, bro, when you play like that, the other team is like, oh shit, all right, motherfucker. Uh, right. So, so they got a choice to make. Like, either we ready or we not. You, you know what I'm saying? Mind you, Carolina we, coming in there. We just popped you last month, forty. We did we coming in the dome? I'm thinking, I know they thinking like, yeah, we about to get some roadkill, go have some dinosaur barbecue afterwards. Like, we chilling. They was feeling here. good. Facts. They was fit. Oh, I, yeah. I might if I'm North Carolina, I might motherfucker come in skipping. You know I mean, I'm, just, I'm, I'm coming in skipping on that motherfucker. We just beat y'all by 36. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, I guess we could do that. But for Syracuse to come back, and and, and I thought shout out to Red too, man. Yeah, Red did an unbelievable job coaching last night. You know what I mean? Just just uh, keeping the guys engaged when North Carolina made a run. He was able to bring them back in, and then we could make our run. Because basketball is a game of runs. That's 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 what's going to happen. You know what I'm saying? But exactly. Red did a, a masterful job yesterday in really keeping these guys engaged. And like I said, from the get, these motherfuckers were aggressive. It, it, yeah, it helps when you shoot 63% from the field. But I was looking at the stats. Dude, North Carolina shot 48%. From the field, exactly. which is which is an animal twelve threes. How we won it, we took care of the ball, we protected the paint for the most part. I thought, if, you yeah, know, for North Carolina, Carolina, what was it, thirty two, thirty two points in the paint? So it's kind of we we yeah. even we, you know what I mean, thirty two, thirty two. But that one, the last game they had damn near sixty in, in, yeah, exactly. in, the, in the fucking paint, and then also, I think just overall defensively, the zone really helped, though. The zone really helped it because it, it, it North Carolina want to play like this, right? Yeah. It slowed them down in the zone. It made them think a little bit more. And I was talking to to Tim Leonard. Shout out to my guy Tim yesterday uh, at, at the to post. T, T yeah. Leonard, my guy, in, in the post game. I don't think North Carolina did a great job of really attacking the zone, like from the free throw line area. Like they put a guy in there. But and Joe, tell me, Joe, tell me if I'm wrong, for real quick. If I'm putting a motherfucker in that middle at that free throw line, mm-hmm. I gotta be a threat to fucking score, yo. I gotta be. A threat. It can't be. They they sending motherfuckers in there first thing they looking to do is pass. As the five man, yeah. I'm falling back. Go ahead, shoot it. Go ahead, shoot. like they they brought a Kado, I think it was, and he was he's a great passer, but he wasn't looking to score you got to get in the middle and turn and look the first thing i'm looking to score because now you bringing that big up now the forward got to drop to protect that high low no now question, when the, no that, that forward drop the wing on the other side or on the same side is that big is doing what fucking relocating to that corner he might kick to that wing you know what i'm saying and, mm-hmm. and it's like a, a domino effect because help has to help help you know what i mean yes exactly. no, for sure. Sure. so that and that all comes from being aggressive, looking to score in in, in that uh there, in that poster in that free throw line. There was there was there was a time in the first <clears throat> half, excuse me, where they did get the same play a couple times where 
it would be, you know, high post pass to the left wing tray ball. Because what would happen is Hema would come up or the big would come up and the guy at the, at the short corner would change from the left short corner and go to the right. So it kind of caused a little confusion. Anytime there was confusion in the zone and then we were leaving a shooter open because everybody had to be accounted for. So they did that. And I think, like you said, they went away from it a bit. And also our zone got a little bit better. But just thinking about what you were saying about having someone up there that's going to attack, I think back to Chris Wright at Georgetown, you know, who they used to put in the high post to Out really be effective. And then, at, and then at times they would put, you know, Greg Monroe because he could pass. He had a nice little 12, 14, 15 footer uh, foot jumper. I think about Villanova. They, I guess they had no choice but to put a guard up there because they played four of them. But, you know, I remember having sometimes them having Malik Waynes in there or Corey Fisher or, or, or Corey Stokes when we played. Um, you know, just someone that could turn and shoot that you're going to have to engage that big, you know what I mean? And that's what makes it <clears throat> difficult. And we're not trying to give away the gems to how to beat the zone. I think teams know how to it's beat simple. every zone. A one, three, one, you got to get guys in the corner, two, three, get someone in the middle. Like that's just how it is. Now it just depends on who you got in those situations and in those positions that is going to determine how successful you are beating that zone. But we were moving well, bro. We were moving. There was a couple of mishaps, which is going to oh, happen yeah. because there was a lack of communication at certain situations where, you know, we have two guys doing the same job, which could never happen because if you're doing the same, if, we're, if both of us doing the same thing, that means someone's open. You know what I'm saying? So miscommunication, we got to talk early in that zone and make sure we got a good little anchor back there and talking. But bro, overall that zone and, not for nothing. If you're only going to play six guys, you're not going to try to go man the whole game. You yeah. got to go zone. Because although you that zone does work and you do have to move, there's times where, all right, I don't got to worry about chasing him off a pin down or chasing him because he's going through to the other side. I'm just calling out to you. Hey, e, he going baseline runner. Boom. You know what I mean? So you definitely could, quote, unquote, I don't want to say this, rest on defense in certain instances in a zone as opposed to a man to man. Yeah, especially if you know the rotations and you could kind of cut, you know, cheat the rotations to go or, or slide or shade over a little bit more. Yeah. Uh, you know, to where, because because you, you know the zone, you know what I'm saying? And, and I think another thing that helped the zone last night is they didn't win the rebounding battle, but they didn't get, it wasn't a, a, a huge margin. I think it was 30, 23, 31, yeah, eight, I think, 31, 23, eight. but. <clears throat> And and you got to think about like I think they had double digit offensive rebounds, but and I think thirteen second chance points. But they did a, they did a good job on the boards trying to match the physicality, right? And then they did a good job of being able to get back and set up in the zone. So so North Carolina mm -hmm. had to play against it. You know what I mean? That's it. And, and then if we're only playing six guys, it's going to help us with foul trouble. You know what I mean? The zone no is going to keep us, keep us out of foul trouble a little bit. And and you look at the guys. Who were playing the majority of the game? <clears throat> Judah, JJ, Bell, 40. Copeland, and Malik Brown. Like, like, so that's your zone right there. So in the back, you got Copeland, Brown, Bell. But long and athletic guys can move. They're active. Copeland's a hell of a defender. I think he, just his activity is, you know, I mean, and, and Malik Brown's one of the best defenders in the ACC. I, I was saying last yep. night, I don't, I don't think he gets enough credit for being that guy as a defender because you know what they, I, I think was, it is too it maybe it's cuz he's not he maybe it's cuz he's not blocking shit every time but he does so much deflections he's that's he's what I'm saying out there switching on to guards and making it difficult for them you know what i mean so those things to me make him all defensive team you know honestly like he he's out there he's doing what he's supposed to do man so he, like you were right. If you did mention that he's not getting the credit he deserves, I absolutely agree because he's, he does a phenomenal job of doing the little things that don't show up on the stat sheet. You know what I mean? And that's what, that's what matters. Yeah. We, we get a deflection. Maybe he tips it out of bounds. We don't get the ball, but at least they don't get a score. Now maybe there's nine seconds on the shot clock and now they can't run their, their set. Now they're into a pressure situation where they might be shooting a shot, uh, a rush shot or something like that. But that matters. Possessions matter, bro. So he's a disruptor. When you're running, he's a disruptor. And when you're doing your analytics and these people want to be, nah, you, they want to be critical and so technical in what a defender or what a what they never hoop. They never hoop. They, they, they never hoop. They never no. hoop. They never hoop. You can't, <laughs> bro, you can't just give the defensive player of the year to a motherfucker who got the most blocks. Man, come on, bro. that motherfucker might be athletic <laughs> as shit. Blocking. I get it. I, I get it. You protecting the rim, but. Yo. 
defense is so many more areas. Like if you watch Malik Brown, like you said, how he hedge out on, on the screens, how he switch on the screens, how he how he you know uh, get right to the high post when the ball goes in the high post, how he's pressuring the ball up at the top of the key. Getting he got to be up up there with some of the most yeah, like getting poking. Poking, Bro, poking. And, yeah, and then he guarded guards. He can switch. He an NBA yeah. player. He, he an NBA player. Yeah. I, I'm telling you, bro. And like, and, and then his offense is slowly but surely coming. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, you, he talked about two for two from the three point line yesterday, and and I think, you know, as he continues to show that he could he can make those shots, a Red's going to give him more of those opportunities. You know, what I mean? and, and him being at the five gives him that opportunity to be able to have those at the at the top of the key. Because if he was at the four, he probably wouldn't be trailing down the middle. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So he wouldn't even have those opportunities. So even though we're undersized with him, it's some good out of it. You know what I'm saying? Because now he's developing more his game, you know, from the outside, which I think is great for him. And then, you know, uh, in the half court offensively, dog, he moves so well. You know what I'm saying? He's such a yeah. good passer. Like, he's a guy who, I don't know if uh, um, the chat saw it, but a, a, a key play from him was that cut from the free throw line where he got fouled by uh, McCormick on, on, on North Carolina, which was a hard, hard that's, foul. That's, but just, that's IQ. Just knowing. You know what I'm saying? Just yeah. knowing. Or him him flashing. A lot of times he gets it, he flashes, and then he don't hold it because he before he gets the ball, he know where he my man is. So he, he might yeah. get it, boom, and then, and then right to the opposite, or boom, and, and, and drop yeah. it right there. He, he's another guy who does, they, they do short roll with him a lot. You know, he doesn't mm-hmm. roll all the way to the basket every single time, but when he does that short roll, they do it with him because they trust that he's able to pass. And, and he can make a decision. Exactly. Me, you know what I mean? He can make a decision. So I, I just like... Well, I love, I love Malik Brown. I love what he brings to the table. Uh, I think, Joe, we said it Fucking last year that he was an NBA cat, you know what I'm saying? We we, I think we said it last year because we just it's just early the season, yeah. But you can see, like Joe, and and tell me if I'm wrong though. Like you could have you know a motherfucking NBA guy just by seeing what he brings. Like he 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 doesn't have to necessarily score thirty. A lot of those motherfuckers who are scoring thirty and twenty five in college aren't going to the NBA. You know what I'm saying? Unless you shooting the blood yeah. off that motherfucker. Like, you shooting the yeah. blood off that thing. Like, J.J. Redick, that was a guy who was averaging 25, but that motherfucker, he was shooting that shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> but, but you might have a guy like Malik Brown who averaged Adam Morrison. Oh, shit. Adam Morrison. 6'9", nine, shooting that six 6'9". Nine. He's 6'9". Six six nine. That's different. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But guys like Malik, you know what I mean, got, who do all the little shit, who are going to go to the NBA because they don't need the ball to score. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It, bro, it's only so many scores you're going to have in the NBA, dog, because that role is really taken up, man. Hey, let me yeah, ask you this. Now we're speaking on roles. We're speaking on roles, and one thing I want to mention about Malik and his ability to now stretch the floor, and he bringing bigs out with him, which should give, okay, there's no big down there to contest shots for when, you know, uh, <clears throat> Judah or JJ get downhill. That's great. You know, if he could bring those bigs out because they got to respect his ability to shoot that top of the key shot then that'll be great going forward. And not just for this season, but just for his development, you oh, know, space for, the floor. for the future years. Yeah, space the floor. Um, but I want to mention a player that went to Syracuse and um, obviously now he's a pro doing well, Max guy, and uh, <clears throat> Jeremy Grant, right? When he was at Q's, his game wasn't fully developed, you know what I'm saying? But he was, what was he? He was athletic. He's going to get your rebounds. He was, he had, he was wiry. He had that frame where, all right, look, I'm going to get you some boards. I'm going to run the floor. I'm going to dunk the ball. And they're looking at that. They're looking at that as, as potential. Like, that's great potential that he had. I see the same thing in Malik where and he might be even a little bit more polished. I could be wrong. Maybe, you know what I'm saying? But I feel like in the not sense Not as athletic. Where, not as athletic, but maybe a little bit more polished. And his knowledge and just knowing agree. what to do out there. You know what I mean? And so, obviously, athleticism is a thing. But if you know what to do on the basketball court, court bro because there's a lot of kids that don't even understand the concept of spacing 
<laughs> like, don't understand the concept of, of, of push pull. Don't they understand like when I'm going away from you, shorten that pass for me because now I'm trying to pass across my defender and yours as opposed to if you just lift up, I could get I could hit you easier at the top of the key or whatever the case is. So just push pull concepts and just like you said, cutting just that presence of mind where it's like, okay, I'm not a fucking robot. I see an opportunity to cut. I'm going to go ahead and do it. Or like you said, decision making, seeing a play ahead. I think that's one of the most underappreciated things. Like kids don't even understand like what's going to happen next. Okay. When I catch this ball, I'm going to do a, but what happens after that? They don't always know, bro. Or they don't, you know, it's everything they do is predetermined. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm going to do this regardless of what happened. Turnover. Boom. We go down the other way. So I like the fact that he could catch and it's like, he's seeing that shit happen. Okay. Boom. Or he might, you know, so just that that presence of mind, that IQ that he has is going to get him far in this hoop shit. And if it's not at the NBA level, which I, I do believe it will be. It will be, yeah. And we, then, you know, he's going to make a lot of money wherever he, he ends up going, 100%. It's a breath of fresh air when you see a motherfucker who know how to play. You know what I'm saying? There's so yep. many skilled and talented kids. They don't even know how to fucking play. Like you said, spacing. Exactly. Or like when you, when you pass the ball, get that space, you know, be able to get that space for the other guy. You know what I mean? Drive and kick. You know, when, when you mm-hmm. drive and kick, now you got to get the fuck out. You know what I mean? Get out to that yeah. corner so, so he has that driving lane. Because you did your job. You sucked in. You, you exactly. got by your defender. You sucked his defender in. You kick it. Now it's up to him to make a read. Do I got a shot or is it, is it a yeah. long closeout where I'm going to drive? But I got to get the fuck out the way. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, Malik is a guy who can change a game just by him, him with his IQ. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it's, he doesn't need the ball. He doesn't need a lot of shots. I mean, I think I don't know what he was yesterday from the field. Fuck, he was. Let me see. Shot perfect. Four for four. Four, yo. For four. You know yeah, four for four. Fourteen points, six rebounds, four assists in 34 minutes, dude. Like it's just. Yo, his impact is there without it, without it being sexy. I guess you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Like that's the type of type of you know world we live in, Joe. Like everybody needed to be sexy as far as like in, in sports basketball, like like a, a reverse ha 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 finish dunk. Mm-hmm. Like that's what's getting the most attention. The, the 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 plays that you put on ESPN, but they not gonna put that fucking back cut that chain that won the game for him because exactly. he got fouled on, on ESPN. Exactly. I mean, real basketball, and and that's going back to talking about the defensive the defensive players. Like people that don't even fucking know how good of a de- offensive player he is. You know what I'm saying? Because they're not seeing him block all type of shots or or get types of that motherfucker might get a deflection. Boom, the guy get it back. He might deflect that bitch again. Now, just off of those <laughs> just off of those two deflections, that shot clock went from fucking twenty four down to ten. Exactly. You, you know what I'm saying? Now now that's what now it's rushed. You know what I'm saying? And that's all because of Malik Brown. You know what I'm saying? So I, I think I people when they're watching the game, watch the motherfucking game. Learn about that shit. It's not just about making threes and doing all it's but, about, they, but you know what? They can unfortunately they can't. Yeah, they can't. I mean, you got to feel like the ball is only, yeah, you have to have been through it. You have to be in it. You have to log a lot of hours doing this shit to really doing it, watching it. I'm talking about like, you can't just watch a game and expect the motherfucker to be like, oh, yeah, he's a great uh, fucking cutter. Nah, they won't. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it won't happen. Yo. You know what I'm saying? But we're here to tell you that these are the things that are important and those are winning plays. You know what I'm saying? Those are plays that impact, directly impact team success, a deflection, a cut, a uh, spacing. That impacts team success directly. And like you said, it's not all about the glitz and glams and the sexy Euro steps and the dunks and the this, that. Nah, just play sound basketball. How many of those do you get a year, Joe? Seriously, like a like a, a Euro step? No, 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 facts, facts. About four to five? Facts. For a Just season, about. Yo. You know what I'm saying? It's one. It's it's catch and shoot. It's pump fake one yep. dribble, or it's pump fake yep. all the way to the rim. Pump fake two dribbles. That's your fucking shot. That's what you should be that's working it. on. When you're talking that's about it. step backs and counter moves, that's a reaction. 
to how the defense is playing that's it. off the, off the that's second it, one. Like, and that's what kills me about we might be getting off topic about these motherfucking trainers and shit. Training kids to fucking do step back. How are you going to fucking train a kid to do a step back and shit? Like, that's footwork. So tra- train the footwork. But mm-hmm. step back and, 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 and all the counter moves are reactions, man. It's not something you yes, fucking... You, you know what I mean? I, I don't know. You like, don't predetermine it, it, a step back. You don't say, oh, I'm about to hit him with a step back. No, nah, you, you, you go to the step back because you get cut off and now shit... All right, I'm a, I'm a, I see you leaning. So what I'm going to do is create space going the opposite direction to give me a clearer look at the basket. Not, I'm just going to go tween, 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 step back, side step. That shit is crazy. You know, I'm, I'm standing, standing there as a defender. I'm just sitting there. All right, motherfucker, go ahead. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I ain't even do shit. Do you, know, you, got, you, you hit Make me with your job. Shit. Right. A degree, your, 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 your shot now becomes that much more difficult. You just made Man, your degree you of difficulty go from five to ten. <laughs> The motherfucker doing all this. Ha, ha, yeah, yeah, ha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, I'm tired as fuck getting into my shot. I ain't got no legs you know after I mean? dribbling that bitch. I dribble the air out there, motherfucker. That's, if that's how you're going to score all game, fuck it. So be it. Man, fuck it. So you be gotta it. Make that's it kinda, and that's kind of, and again, we not. I'm not getting on Judah because I thought, I think Judah's having a great year. I mean, he was a, he had a great yeah, yes. game last night. He, he, you know what he did last night? He played to his fucking strengths, like what he does. Mm-hmm. Get, get by mm-hmm. motherfuckers at will. Get to the free throw line. And yesterday he was able to make better decisions. But a lot of the times, dog, he make it hard on himself because it's it, it, there's so many hard shots, yo. So many hard shots. Like you, like we talk about, it's hard to sustain a whole season like that. If he can have games like this, and we're getting to the end of the season, but going into the ACC tournament, if you could play like this, you make it easy on yourself. You know what yep. I'm saying? You make you make it easier on, on, on the offense. I think you make it easier Speaking on your Speaking of ACC mind. tournament, Q Sports Talk, we need to get out there, but that's another story. Um, we'll, we'll figure that out when, when the time comes. <laughs> is, it in Brooklyn? Is, is, is it in Brooklyn or is it in Greensboro? Because if it's in Greensboro, shit, I'll let you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're going to write that motherfucking check. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, yeah, because in Brooklyn it's a little more enticing. Ah, <laughs> you already know. Oh, Tom, Tom's anxiety. He's talking about how about Copeland on on the defensive end last night. Yeah, we I think we mentioned Copeland. Yeah, uh, no, like that. every night. game we. Yeah, every game his shit is his yeah. presence is felt out there. No, he's a he, he's a the Swiss Army knife. You know what I'm saying? He 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 can do a lot of a little bit of everything and. He, again, he's. I think him and Malik are the two best defenders on the team. But Copeland's a guy at six seven, who can guard multiple positions. I think just his activity, his passion for the game, allows him to be that much better. You know what I'm saying? When you he he's always engaged. That's what I will say. You know what I'm saying? Like he when when you watch him, like he's never like fuck it. <sighs> that motherfucker is engaged. You know what I'm saying? Like he he he's ready to play and like he he he's having fun out there. You know what I mean? That's half yeah, the battle you see, right there. You see him on the bench. He on the bench doing all yeah, type of shit. It. I'm like, yo, you know what? You know what's crazy, bro, about that bench shit, that bench celebration shit? I couldn't tell you a time where, like, I don't think we could have even done that when coach was around type shit. Get up off the bench and do all type of antics on the side and shit. Like, <laughs> that, it, it's fun to see, though, because I think that that's what, like, is growing the game in a sense where you, it's a game, bro. This is some shit we played at recess. Yeah. No doubt. This you is the shit, shit that we play. Like we gotta enjoy. We gotta find ways to enjoy it because if you don't, you'll be you'll just feel like ah damn, this is some bullshit. No, you gotta find ways to enjoy it. And I love the 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 passion and the the the, the joy that he brings to the game. He's a crowd pleaser, he he's an entertainer. Same thing like Judah, bro. Judah is one of the best, like, you know, I like how Judah play when he get the fans going, he get the fans involved. Love but, it. but but QC QC or do some shit. He'll do some shit. He'll run back yeah. on the court. <laughs> I'm over there crying at the TV like that's my dog right there. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, no, he do exactly what he's supposed to do, man. On all fronts. On all fronts. Yeah, that, I mean, it, him, I think his number one a- attribute for me, obviously he's, he does a lot of things great, but just his energy, bro. I, I, people will overlook that, man. When you could have that energy f- throughout the game, bro, <laughs> Most people on on the other team, your team, they can't they can't hold that ener- that same energy. Oh, motherfucker, it's snowing. Ah, 
If they can't hold that. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, they can't hold that same energy throughout the game. So if you're able to keep that level right here, you pass them motherfuckers. You know what I mean? As, exactly. as you go, go through that 40 minutes. So, yeah, Tom, you you right. Copeland's defense, I mean, towards the ends of the game, just, just him keeping everybody engaged. And then his energy keep everybody locked in. You know what I'm saying? I, I, bro, the, this team is full of sophomores. And I know in this day and age, sophomores, like, motherfuckers is usually leaving. You know what I'm saying? That's just, that's just how it is now. But they're still young, bro. They're still learning. And they're super fucking talented, bro. It, it just comes to be, yep. like, it has to be the consistency of the effort every single game. Because you can't tell me you lose in North Carolina by 36 and then come back and beat them. Y'all motherfuckers wasn't yeah. competing that first game against that's North it. Carolina. You, you just wasn't competing. But if, if y'all compete, yeah. you could beat anyone with that lineup. I, I mean, even with that, and, those and five guys. Proof is in the pudding. Proof is in the pudding, dog. Like, you you know what I'm saying? But it's just, we like you said, that consistency. We lose to Wake Forest by 30. You come back and or, and, and you beat Carolina, who's ranked, what are they, seventh or seventh? Yeah. So, you know, just like you mentioned, bro, just that consistency that we need. Um, I don't know if this is an old comment or, or a, uh, a newer one, because my shit kind of fucking up right now, but... Someone mentioned that Taylor is a good player that he just needs to get out of his head and then he'll be straight, you know, and saying that uh, he's there for a reason. I think it was who was that Big Poppy? My name, my username is Big Poppy. I mean, Big Poppy. I mean, it, it, it just, you know, sometimes, and again, I'm not saying he's leaving. I'm just saying, like, this game, it, it, like, if you're not doing what you could do, like what you're capable of doing. We know he could do it. You know what I'm saying? But if you're not doing it, yo, you only got that you much time. For a second. But mm -hmm. you only got that much time, you know, especially how it is nowadays. Like either a guy going to transfer in and you got to get on your shit and show a motherfucker in practice that you busting his ass. If not, he taking your spot. And, and, and that's just how it goes. Like he's a great kid. You know what I'm saying? I, we, you see the talent there. You got some talent, but talent, Everyone has a little bit of talent at this level. You know what I mean? But if you're yeah. not producing or making an impact on the floor, and he's going to get an opportunity because we're short right now. We don't have a lot of guys. You know what I'm saying? And and I think they want to keep him engaged and locked in. But, bro, if you're going to go out, go out like a motherfucking champ. Motherfucker, if, yeah. I, if I'm not going, if I'm, 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 I'm going 0 for 12 or something. Man. I'm going to the hole, missing a couple of layups. I'm going aggressive or something. Even if it's not, he working. did have a nice little turnaround jumper. He had a nice little turnaround there in the middle, but that's some shit that he could do. He's six five, six six. He shoot the ball. That. He's fairly athletic. He's thinking you know too much. He, think too much, bro. That's it. He just need, a, you know. Um, I like Chris Bell. His productivity yesterday we made a couple, like a tough one dribble pull up, one two dribble pull up there on the right side of the of the floor. Some some tough threes, the heavily NBA contested, but he just has that shooting. Yeah, for sure. He just has that shooting ability that makes it so easy for him. And that's the thing. When you do have that shooting ability, that's how guys are going to close out on you. And that's why it should open up so much more of his game because I'm flying out. I'm trying to run you off the line. If I'm a defender, I'm running. I'm sure the scout is run him off the line. We don't want to want him to get any open looks. So that's when he has to go ahead and now develop that next part of his game where he's getting to the basket or he's able to – punch the gap and, and, and kick, you know what I'm saying, on time, on target to, to someone else. But that's just that that next phase of the game that he needs to unlock. But he played a hell of a game last night. And without his, you know, contributions, obviously, we probably don't end up winning. You know what I'm saying? So that was it was yeah. good to see. Um, everybody played their role is what I would say. Yesterday was a game where Judah and JJ did exactly what's expected of them or what has yep. been expected yep. of him. You know what I'm saying? Like like I mentioned earlier, I like the pop that, that J.J. had in his game early. You mentioned just them being aggressive from the jump and, and throwing the first punch, not trying to play rope or dope. And, and, and nah, we threw the first punch, and fuck it, you're going to be on your heels all game. That, and yeah. let's see how you How, how you going to react? Let's see how you do. Exactly. Yeah. And so <clears throat> I like that. But everyone played their role, bro. Everyone played their role really well. And that's, that's what we have to do. Um, and obviously, it won't be that picture perfect every game, right? But the, the, the fact remains that everybody has to go in there, playing their role, accepting their role, and then being a star in it. And, and I think this, Joe, those five guys who we mentioned on the court, Judah, JJ, uh, Malik, Chris, and Copeland, 
All, all five of those have, have uh, an opportunity to make money, bro. A lot of money at the, at the next level. Professional, like uh, NBA overseas. I think, I think Chris Bell and Malik are guys who, those two guys are the, the ones that stand out to me. You know what I'm saying? As far as like, because Chris Bell can shoot that motherfucker, bro. Like he, I, I said yesterday oh, on the on the on the post game, he his, his shot is pretty as fuck, and it reminded me of two guys like Andy and you because you <clears throat> you got that pretty motherfucker like that. It, it, it's just like it ain't it, it's boom, man. That bitch look great. Yeah, you'd be like, damn, motherfucker, that shit that shit is pretty. <laughs> so, that motherfuckers ain't got the, the the pretty form, but that bitch going in. Yeah, you know what I mean. But yeah. but as far as like. Man, bam, that shit effortless, Shoot, smooth, mm-hmm. like you, mm-hmm. Andy, and him. And, and, and once he, like, because he believes it, but once he really locks in and engages, like, we need you on the defensive end. We need you to use your athleticism, chase down blocks. Six, seven, <laughs> shooting that big. Like you said, playing off of the yeah. closeouts, pump fake one dribble. We've seen a couple of them. You know what I mean? He, uh, uh, eventually, it's going to be, he's going to get the one dribble down, and then eventually, it's going to be pump fake. I'm taking off, motherfucker. <laughs> Bang. bang out, you yep. know what I mean? Uh, bang out that six, seven, all the way to the rim. So I, I think those five guys, they have the potential to all make a lot of money. But those two guys really stick out to me. And, and depending on how Copeland like progresses with his game, dog, he got like Sean Livingston in him. You know what I mean? He got a lot of Sean Livingston. Yeah, no in question. Because Sean Livingston was a big shooter. Nah. But he, he gets got, to where he, he can get to the basket. He can pass the ball. He does a great job, man. He. It was one time he threw a fucking one hand full court pass type shit in the first. Was that in the first half? I believe it was. Yeah, yeah the he, first he's half. He's not afraid, dog. Shit, that's, that he's not. He's not. And he, he, I like the fact that. But you know what that tell me? That Red and Staff, but especially Red, a hey, be who you are because the same plays that you're making. Yeah, you might turn the ball over a couple times, but you're gonna make three, four great fucking passes. And we could live, you know what I'm saying? We could live with those. So go ahead and be who you are. Like, we're not trying to box you in in any way, shape, or form. And I think we spoke about this, you know, briefly before we got on. It's just the fact that you got someone like Malik. I don't think Malik Brown took a three or a shot outside of, you know, 15 feet last season. You know what I mean? Now he's out here. He's shooting threes. He's two for two last night. And his game is expanding, bro. And and, and that's the sign of a coach saying, you know what? First, you got to show him you could do it. So he must be shooting, get his reps in, you know, with, yeah. with, with Griff or whoever it may be. And now it's translating to the game. Bro, that's a coach that's giving you confidence. I've, I've seen, I know what that is for a coach, what it looks like when a coach has taken confidence away from somebody. And I've seen what it is when a coach gives a kid confidence. I mean, fuck, man. You think of myself, Paul Harris, in my first year as a freshman, Paul probably for his tenure at Syracuse, you shoot a fucking three, you're looking directly at the bench after if you miss because if that motherfucker don't go in, you're going to go take a nice long seat right next there, right next to Bernie and Coach Murphy. You know what I'm saying? No doubt. Real talk. So, but for the fact that he's shooting that bitch with confidence and he's not even worried about makes or misses, I'm like, okay, yeah. They gave him they gave him the the, the juice that he needs to be able to take that shot. They put the barrier in his back. Like, yeah, Malik, go ahead and shoot that ball, bro. You done showed us you could do it. Now just make him in the game. That's a fact. Don't be surprised he started making two, two, probably one to two threes a game now. That's a fact. So look, y'all, we, uh, th- you know, our time has come to an end, obviously. So we'll end it like this. You know, we got six games left, I believe. Um, we talked about it last night on the post game. Uh, I think the magic number before the end of the season is 20. So we got 16 wins. We got to get, we got to win four out of these six and then hopefully win one or two ACC tournament games, um, you know, to get, yeah. to get into the tournament. So that's it, Joe. That's that's for me. That's 20 wins. Hopefully we get a couple to uh, get in the ACC tournament, in the ACC tournament, 21, 22, whatever it is. And then I think we may have a chance. But um, we appreciate everybody tuning in, man. I know it's Valentine's Day. Um, y'all go ahead and, you know, if you got a love or whatever, you know, get us some flowers, get us some candy. I'm actually running to the store. I'm going to get my, my baby girl. I'm going to surprise them at lunch, get them some flowers and candy. And, and, oh, and, yeah. And, and, and doing all that yeah hey yeah and if <laughs> if, 
if you want to get some Flintstone product for Valentine's Day, and then y'all end y'all night like that, y'all go ahead, man. Listen, man. Hey, Two or three, man, man, great man, night. Man, man, good. Jeezy used to say that. I'm just saying, but uh, you know, y'all can, y'all, y'all can look that up, man. But uh, man, we appreciate y'all tuning in, man. We're gonna see y'all next week. Wednesday, 10 to 11. Me and my brother, Chris Joe, you know, it's always a pleasure, baby. And we out, (laughs) y'all.